Hey guys, welcome back to Salmon Industries. Today, I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process for completely removing your Festiva's dashboard, along with how to take out the climate control, steering wheel, and gauge cluster. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do to take the dash out is to remove the gauge cluster. The gauge cluster is held in by the bezel surround and then four screws going in the dash behind it. But in order to pull it all the way out, you actually have to disconnect the speedometer cable from the trans first, which is not too hard to do. Looking at the firewall, you can follow this cable from the speedometer down the transmission. I'll come around to the back side. right down to there. That piece will unscrew and allow you to pull the cable up into the cluster sim. Once the speedo cable is disconnected, you can take off the five Phillips screws holding on the gauge bezel. One here, here, and here, and then one on the bottom side here, and another there on the opposite side. For the middle one, I'm going to grab a shorter screwdriver so I can fit. If your Festiva came with options like a rear defrost or rear wiper, you'll have a couple switches here on your bezel. Be careful when pulling it off, because they're plugged in to the wiring harness behind the dash. We'll unplug these as we go. The whole cluster is clipped in pretty good, so don't be afraid to give it a good pull. Start from the bottom, just kind of work your way up, and just give it a good pull. You'll hear it click. And then you can kind of rotate it off to the side. Now we should be able to see our plugs for our switches. Even if you don't have switches, you should have some plugs plugged into these blanks on the back side, as most Festivas actually come pre-wired for all the accessories, even if you don't have them. Now that the bezel's off, you can see there are four screws holding in the cluster. Two on this side, and two on the other side. Same thing, Phillips should remove those. Next, we're going to go ahead and get the steering wheel out of the way. Uh, there are two little Phillips screws on the back side of the horn pad, right behind the horns that hold the horn pad on. They look a little something like this. After you've popped those out, the horn pad will pop off. And you'll see you have one little wire for your horn. We go to put it back together, this little spade terminal gets plugged in right here on that little spade. Then you need a 21 millimeter socket to undo the steering wheel bolt. I like to use an impact just to make it easier. But you just need to loosen it a little bit so that it, it is a small gap. And then wiggle the wheel left, right, left, right until it pops right up off of there. Now you take the nut the rest of the way off. And your steering wheel should come right off. Just like that. Get the cluster the rest of the way out. You just want to grab it from the top edge, kind of up inside, and pull it out towards you as one unit to get to out here, and then tilt the top down to clear the inside. It's just kind of tipping it down, pulling it out. You'll feel a bit of resistance from the cables. If it's really hard to pull, don't yank on it. Just be nice and slow with it, just until you can kind of get behind it. So while you're behind it, you want to unplug your spawner cable which is this clip here. You just kind of push on the clip and it should pull right out. Then there are two plugs going into your speedometer cluster. One here, just press the tab and wiggle it off. And on the same for the other black one, 
press that tab and it wiggles off as well. Now your cluster's free. Now you can already see a good reason to pull this dash out. Mice. These little buggers have made quite a home in this dashboard. Next, we'll take off the shroud and pull the combo switch assembly out of the way. That way we can slide the dash up over this and nothing's stuck in the way. For that, you just need a longer Phillips and to unplug some cables at the bottom. So if you come down here, you can see the holes for the Phillips in the back here, one here, one here, and one here. Keep note of your screws when you're screwing this. There is one, the one in this corner here, is actually a threaded bolt. With those out of the way, this clamshell just splits down the middle. It's kind of clipped in place, like so. Bottom half and top half. Then we're going to remove this lower piece of plastic. This lower plastic is just a little plastic push pins. You pull the center of the pin down, and then the whole clip should pop out. There's three of these on the bottom. You can use a small pry bar or pick if you can't get these with your fingers. And then one on each side. off. Next we'll pull off this little metal brace. It's held in with four 10 millimeter nuts on the bottom side with little access holes for your ratchet. All right with that piece off. While we're here there are two more little rubber buttons. If you pop those little rubber buttons off you'll find two small bolts, again, 10 mils, hit underneath it. While we have our tool, we'll go ahead and pull those off. Now this whole piece can slide out of the way. Next, we're gonna go down to where the center cubby used to be and remove these three bolts. Take this little metal bracket off. that. Do the same thing with the other bracket. Just one 10 mil on this one. After you have that little bracket pulled off, you can follow this big metal bar here. This piece is actually held on all the way up into the dash. If you follow it across to your hood release, you'll see it's held in by another 10 millimeter nut right in front of my finger here and one right next to the latch over here. Same deal, just pop those off. And now you should be able to wiggle a metal bar off the stud and around your hood release. Now I'll work on taking off the combination switch. There's just some plugs on the back side and it's held on with a fancy hose clamp basically in the center. So with the Phillips again, go to the bottom side. And you'll see there's this little screw. Loosen that. Now, with the clamp loose, you should be able to wiggle this as a whole unit and kind of pull it forward. You can only pull it a little bit up before it gets stuck by the cables. So, looking at the back side, you can see some of the cables we have to undo. Over on the left, you have a big black plug here on the top, the large white one. The white on the bottom side, and on the wiper side of things, 
Another large plug on the back side here. So I'll work on popping those off. Now you can pull it out a little further. And then you left this one small white plug for the headlight switch. Unplug him and it's free. So there's a view of the back side. The plugs you'll be able to plug, in, plug here, 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 here and the small white one for an EFI car. And just to give us a little more clearance when we're taking the dash out, we're gonna go ahead and drop the steering column down a little bit. Uh, there's just two bolts that hold it in to the dash, here and here. Now the whole column will kinda tip down out of the way. Next, we'll go ahead and take the glove box out. Taking the glove box out is super easy. When you open it, if you look down inside, you'll see a small Phillips screw on each side. You just gotta reach your screwdriver down there, unscrew those. Then, if you squeeze the insides, you'll see the piece that acts as the stopper. You can go past that little stopper and pull the whole thing out. With the glove box out of the way, now we can remove the climate control. Now the climate control, all three of your switches are controlled by long cables that run through the dash. All right, now we'll follow those cables in the car. So four screws that hold in the climate control. And then under the dash, we'll start with the cable on the far left. So underneath, on the side of the box, you can see it right here. It just pops out of the holder and off the nub here. Then, back on the other side. Similarly, on the bottom of the box. There's one here. Same thing. Push it out. Then, going back to where your glove box was, if you look straight up, you'll see the other one. And a clip here, going along the top, and then clipped into the fresh air box on the other side. Again, same as before. Just pull it out of its holder, pop it off the plastic piece. Just like that. Now, while the cable's done, we can start pulling out the climate control. You just want to scooch it out slowly. And keep in mind that the electrical connections are still plugged in. So we'll pull out a little bit and you can reach around kind of through the glove box to reach some of these cables. Just try to push it through. So here's the big plug for the blower motor switch. That one done. Another one here for the lights. Try and plug that through the glove box hole. And then a couple plugs for the AC. These might be easy to reach through the radio hole. So this is your blower motor plug right here, little plug for the lights. Those both come up from the top, kind of where the glove box sits. 
and then from the back or kind of on the bottom side if you have an AC car these are the buttons for your or these are the plugs for your AC button if you reach in the glove box area you can kind of see the plug that goes into the door this goes for your door latch or your power mirrors all your door accessories go through this plug here so we'll go ahead and unplug that one you'll do the same thing on the other side this one's a little harder to see since it's buried by so many cables luckily for us on this car you can kind of see it dangling over here under next to the hood release switch so same deal we'll unplug him and later as we pull it out there's a big blue plug up here in the corner that we'll have to unplug to pull the whole dash out but that's easier to do once you've already started pulling it so from this corner we've undone our stud here and the bolt here there's another stud like that on the driver's side down under your speaker right there another 10 mil Then, all you need to do is get the last bolts holding it into the top. There are a bolt hiding under these little plastic pieces on each side. Then, one cap here, one under your clock delete plate, which just pops out of place. Black one here, and one under that plate. And to get those off, to fit a tool under the windshield, you're going to need either a really thin ratchet or a little tool made of a ratchet wrench. And I'll show you guys how I do that next. So to get the top bolts out of the dash, uh, instead of using a really thin quarter inch drive ratchet, since I don't have one, uh, I like to take these little hex drive bits. These are for like a, like a drill. So this is a 10 millimeter hex drive and then a quarter inch gear wrench or ratchet wrench. And putting that in there, now you have a very, very short ratchet. And then we're going to need a pick to pull the plastic pieces out. All right, so you just want to get your pick off the side, pop these out. Then the ratchet and the tool. That just fits under the windshield. Now you do the same thing on the other side, pop the cap off with your pick, then get your tool in there and start unscrewing. And then same thing on the sides, just use your pry tip tool, pop off the little plastic covers. Like that. And these you just reach with a regular socket. The one in the center of the dash. Again, regular socket should get that no problem. And lastly, the one on the driver's side. Can you move? I'm doing all our work here. Then we're gonna go ahead and pull out the fuse box. Just two little Phillips screws. And it just kind of pulls like down towards you. Then 
a little clip on the bottom. So down top towards you, back pushes in, and you kind of push that into the dash a little bit. The last piece you want to take off, this little piece that goes to your vents from your airbox, this little pin, just kind of holds it in place. Just pull that little pin out, wiggle that out of the way, and pop him off. That way our dash can fit around our steering column. Now we should be able to just kind of lift straight up so it barely touches the windshield, rotate it back, and pull it over your steering column. I get it to about here, and then there's a couple electrical plugs we have to unplug just over there on the left side. So, with our dash pulled a little bit out, you can see this giant blue plug here. That is the main dash harness. So, we're just going to unplug him. Now, you should be able to just lift the whole dash out and shove it towards the driver's side. Real quick in here, you'll see there's one more hose uh, for your defrost vent. That just pops off. Little flexi hose. And that should be it. And there you have it. One complete Festiva dash. You can see inside, uh, the dash itself actually keeps all of your wiring for your radio, all the wiring for your switches, your speaker, all that runs through the dash harness itself. And looking in the car, this is what it looks like inside with the dashboard removed. In this corner over here, you have your ECU, uh, all your relays are stuck up behind it. Your fuel pump relay down here in the corner. Then your fuse box stays with the car. And then you can see your heater box here. So your heater core sits about there. Your blower motor sits on the side of this. Then you have your defrost vents going up to your window on both sides, along with the outlet for the floor heat. Now, sometime in a future video, I'll probably go along through all the internals of the dash, how the AC system works, and kind of show you guys how to replace some of these old dried up seals you can see here, where it all just flakes up and falls off. But for now, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Thanks so much for joining me, and I hope to see you again later. See ya. <coughs> ah, what a great way to start the video. Jordan. Mm. Your, your speedo drive cable is uh, not bolted to your transmission. It's also seized to the cable. You're going to have a few switches. Jesus. <sighs> Dude, I should hang that from the mirror. help us get to the wiring for the ignition switch and the oh yeah it doesn't matter what am I talk about